Hello everyone and welcome to Muddy Beards 4x4. I am Robbie and today we are back out in the shop working on the one ton swap on the trail plug, my 99 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Now I still have some parts, I'm still waiting on some things to finish up that rear four link, but in the meantime, I gotta start slamming out some of these literal projects so I can get my axles fully assembled and bolted underneath the Jeep. That is why today we're gonna be addressing steering and these big old knuckles. Now what we have here is the front knuckle off of a 99 to 2004 Ford Super Duty Dana 60 axle. So this knuckle is a little bit different than the 05 plus variants, but the premise of this is all the same. The biggest problem is the steering arms and the mounting location for the factory steering on these Ford axles is just way too low. So when I'm off-roading or rock crawling, if I mounted my you know tie rods or my steering rods this low, they're gonna be constantly hung up on things. So what I want to do is lift or raise that mounting location, get it more up in line up here here, lift that thing up to get it up off the ground and away from obstacles. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to install a high steer kit. So what we have here is a complete weld on high steer kit. Now there are many companies that make sets up setups like these and all of them are fairly similar. This particular one comes from a company called Beyond Precise Fabrication and there's no real reason why I chose this one. You know, I think it was a impulse buy. I saw it online and it was on sale, so I bought it. Um, but it comes with your new mounting arms, um, some DOM spacers, these big old grade eight bolts, um, some gusseting and things like that to tie everything in. And so it comes with everything that you're gonna need. It's all made out of quarter inch material and true to its name, it is all precisely cut out. And this thing looks really good. So if you're interested in this kit, and uh, by the end of the video, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out a kit yourself but now that i got this all out and ready to install let's bring it over to the knuckle and take a look at what we got to do to get this right, welded so how on this kit works is we take this big long three-quarter bolt here now you are going to have to drill out the uh the factory mounting position here um, these are tapered from the factory obviously to accept a traditional ball joint so you are going to have to drill out to three-quarter um, it is cast, so just take your time, step up to the, you know, to the proper size uh, drill bits and just punch her out. But um, basically what you do is you take your two new arms here and then these two pieces of DOM um, sleeving, which are helping space this thing out. And this big bolt essentially is going to go through the entire thing and actually bolt down. It's part of the assembly and then of course these new arms weld onto the knuckle itself. But as you can see, right away, we're already having some clearance issues. As you can see, these arms are rubbing up against the knuckle a little bit. There is like a boss right in here. I think that's a casting boss. Then I'm definitely gonna have to clearance for this lower arm to fit down where it's supposed to. I'm assuming it's supposed to fit up tight against the knuckle right here, which it should as soon as I grind down some of that. Um, up top here, it actually looks like this is the, I believe the hole where the, I think like an ABS line ran to, there was a bolt there, if I remember right. It looks like I'm going to have to grind that down to make this sit flat, because it looks like it wants to sit flat across this ledge, which would be great to get a good weld across there. So like most of these kits, I am going to have to grind down here a little bit on the knuckle. I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, just keep test fitting it until this thing fits nice and tight. Then we can move on to welding her up.
Well, check it out. Everything is now ground down into place, and I got my high steer kit now just sort of mocked, bolted up into place right now. I even got my little braces here in the side. Now, everything went together really, really well. Up here on the top, you know, the biggest thing was making sure that this top arm was nice and flat. So you really had to grind down the top of the knuckle here just to make sure this was sitting nice and flat. Um, but besides that, I'm pretty happy with um, the way everything fits together. And even the gaps, you can see there's a little bit of gap like right here in the front. Um, but honestly, this thing is fit really well together. I even got my little brace pieces here and stuff. Those look pretty good. Um, I did um, go ahead and threw a bolt um, here just to make sure that everything was aligned this way. So when I go to put my heim joints in, you know, I want to make sure that the spacing and everything here is perfect. So I think I'm going to weld it up with this bolt in place just to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to. Um, here on the top, you can see I have a nice big old like valley. In fact, I even beveled the edge of this top arm when I cleaned it up for welding so that I can throw in probably a big old root pass and then even I should be able to go over with another weld like on top and I should be able to get a nice thick hot I mean strong weld on this thing. So I'm pretty happy with the way this works and I need to start welding but what we have to remember is that these knuckles are a cast material and of course this weld on high steer kit is steel so i should probably be using like a nickel alloy like rod um, but most people have plenty of success just using regular mig on this so i'm gonna go ahead and go with i'm gonna go ahead and go with that but that means we're gonna have to prep um, this welding um, in a particular way. So we're gonna get this thing nice and hot. Um, I'm gonna use just a propane torch and I'm gonna get it up to at least 450 degrees. And what I think I'm going to do, um, once I get it up to temp is I'm gonna go ahead and weld, but I'm gonna weld my top and my bottom arms to the cast piece first. Okay, then I'm gonna go back, get my torch on it, keep it warm, keep it to temp, get my side pieces put in and tack welded and then weld them up. And again, keep the heat on it again until I move on to the next stage of welding because I think I'm gonna weld um, the spacer here even to the bottom of the knuckle. So um, kind of weld this thing into stages but keeping the heat on as I go. And then once I'm done at welding, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it with a welding blanket nice and tight and let this thing cool down very slowly and that should help minimize um, any cracking that I might have from welding to a cast material. So let's go ahead and get this thing welded. I can't wait.
Well, check it out, everybody. My high stair kit is all welded up and installed, painted and finished. And man, they look awesome. This was a pretty fun and honestly pretty darn easy little project to do. Really the biggest challenge is again welding to that cast material but um, just looking at this I'm pretty happy with the way everything turned out. I don't see any visual signs of cracks at least now and so you know just making sure you got a good preheat and post heat regimen this should go together pretty well. And it's certainly one of those upgrades that if you're doing a one ton swap with Super Duty axles you want a high steer kit. You don't want to do all this work to mount, you know, that steering in the factory position. Now, so as you can see, this significantly increases the height of your mounting point of your steering, getting that whole steering system up out of the rocks and giving you a crossover style, which I believe performs better and feels better and helps you get better at geometry. Now you are going to have to use a hind joint style rod end for this and I'm simply going to mount them parallel with each other. Um, I believe I'm going to try to mount the tie rod here out front and the drag link in um, in the inside. Now the reason why I want to try to do that is when I go to set up my steering is is that if I mount the tie rod out here I'll probably have less clearance issues with like the diff cover. Um, but if that doesn't work out obviously I have some room and this particular kit does come with this extra bracket. Now the way it looks like on their website, it mounts up here like this, and you can weld this top bracket here and therefore mount your Heim probably for your drag link up here. So I want to mount them parallel, um, but if it doesn't work, if I'm having clearance problems or if my geometry doesn't work, then I'm gonna go ahead and mount it on top. So I hope you enjoyed the video in this relatively simple project. I had fun with it and the best part of it is is that now I got these welded on, I can start loading up these knuckles, get my new ball joints installed and I'm getting closer and closer to getting everything just put on that axle and installed underneath the Jeep for good. So. I know it's taken me a long time, but I'm making progress and I'm getting there. And I appreciate those of you that are being patient with me because I'm having to be patient myself. Um, if you want to get one of these kits from Beyond Precision, I will leave a link um, in the description below. I think it worked out great. I'm pretty happy with this kit. So if you want to check them out, I'll leave a link. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more on this one ton swap, make sure you click subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you on the trail.